Our program today, and I don't want to take too much time with the introduction because it's a really exciting and fun program, something we've never done before. Chef Don told me that he had experienced this on the mainland, and he said it would be really cool if we could do a, a water tasting. And but I don't, you know, I don't know someone that does that. And I said, but I do. And that's the foundation's mission is to find people out in the industry that are doing phenomenal things. And one of those individuals is Jocelyn Lee, who's with us today. And Jocelyn has an amazing background. She's the founder of Eat, and she'll tell you a little bit about that here in Honolulu. It's a catering company and much more than that, a talent agency and a chef's collaborative. But as well as that, she is a key account manager for Constellation Brands for Southern Wine and Spirits here in Honolulu. And she has just started that program, um, with them, started working with them on that. But she has her, her sommelier uh, distinction for both wine and water. And she's only one of 20 in the United States that has that distinction, or the world is it, I guess. Uh, that, that has that, right now. has that yeah. distinction. So very honored to have Jocelyn with us today. And she's going to walk us through a tasting of sparkling and still waters and something that is so essential and so vital to life and something we many times take for granted. But it is part of the hospitality profession and the culinary profession. And it's a part of daily living. So without any further taking up time, Jocelyn, thank you so much for making time for us and being here today. She is also a member of Les Dames de Scoffier, which I must mention here in Hawaii. So thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha everyone, I'm so excited to be here and I also thank you very much for participating in this today. Uh, this is something that I'm very passionate about and I wanted to make this fun as well. So this is not going to be a lecture, it will be interactive. We also have a, a special guest as well, Tracy, who is with Fiji Water. And I am a certified sommelier in both water and wine. Out of a raise of hands, how many of you are not familiar with the term sommelier? Great. So what I want to do is just uh, first tell you, a sommelier is basically one who orders and maintains the wine within a restaurant. It can also be known as a wine director. Uh, being a somme does not mean that you had to be certified. You could actually work your way up, kind of like you could be a chef and work your way up from a dishwasher through the experience and become a great chef. You can do the same thing as a somme. There are certifications, so the Court of Masters is one way to do that, to become certified as a sommelier in wine, um, in spirits and whatnot, and then there's the MW. So it's other certifications just within our food and beverage community. Uh, the water psalm is something really fun that I've been very passionate about and excited uh, to look into uh, for three years specifically. Uh, I w did want to tell you that before I became a psalm, um, I wanted to go back to uh, 2001, March of 2001. I was at the Windows in the World at the Trade Towers, and that was the first time I became excited about being a psalm because I learned about Andrea Immer, who was a master sommelier, working with the largest wine list in the nation at the time. So again, here we are. Uh, a year to the date of the great tragedy, but at the same time, that's during a timeline of 17 years that I can share with you of my journey so far, so at least you kind of can see that. Uh, in regards to um, being here in Hawaii, I've actually been here for 16 years. So since I bit the, had that little food and wine bug back in 17 years ago, um, I have been here for 16 out of those years. So this is very much my home and I love uh, what we're doing out here, and I feel very blessed that I get to call it home as well. For those of you um, in this culinary profession, I do have a handout. And just so you know, uh, after today, just know that there's contact information, and you can feel free to reach out um, if there's any questions or whatnot. I think email is a great way to do it, but I just want you to know that it's not just today and I'm having a conversation with you. We can continue this conversation, and that's the beauty about the food, beverage, and hospitality industry. Um, in regards to the water, so in front of you, I kind of have a little um, tasting in front of you of still and sparkling water. And I thought it would be nice for you to be able to taste blindly without knowing what it is. Um, so as of right now, as we're kind of um, sitting here together, feel free to kind of taste starting from number one, um, actually start tasting from the one water that's off of the map 
and then taste all the way to number five. And you can just sit and sip it, but try as you're sitting and sipping as we're talking um, to see about the subtle differences because these are all very different. When I had the opportunity to learn about the water SOM program, so just know that I became certified uh, back in the day and I've been in restaurants and retail and distributing, um, so I've kind of had a whole overview. There was one night, this would have been three years ago, there was a Conan O'Brien episode on, and there was this water psalm, this man named Martin Rees, and he was saying how he was the only water psalm in the nation. I'm like, balderdash, like if you're doing it, I'm doing it. So I went ahead and I actually emailed him and I asked him, well, how did he do that? And he said he got certified in Germany. So I Googled water psalm Germany, and then that's how I found domains. And so this is where you see Watersalm Domenz. Domenz is a university in Munich in Germany. And they actually now teach, only in the past year, uh, a, a course in English. And I found that in South Korea, they also have a certification as well. The thing is you have to travel there about three times. And then the one in Germany is only once, but it's two full weeks. It's 100 plus hours. And it essentially was this book of information, which was pretty neat. We tasted over a hundred different bottled spring waters, and in the handout, there's actually a picture. Um, the first picture you see is the certification, and these are going to be just two of the instructors, but one of the instructors is actually has his PhD in food chemistry, so they're taking it very serious. When you go into the next page, this is how we do our tasting. So we actually have them in uh, lovely glasses and vials, and we're actually deducing. And this is a full-on process where we're deducing a number of different trace minerals. So when you end up looking at your tasting map, there's going to be a couple notes for calcium, magnesium, bicarbonates, potassium, sodium. And those are going to be just some trace minerals. Um, in certain waters, you may have silica or you have more um, uh, minerals that may not be listed here. But with that said, these are going to be a sense of terroir. So if we're talking spring bottled water, uh, working within um, a whole process, a pristine process, it's going to be um, these types of companies I have in front of me. That's where we get to start working our way down this list. When we're in a restaurant setting, there is a lot of us, if we're having wine or uh, different food that we have, this is a really great way to accentuate or as a palate cleanser or to accentuate the wines that we have or even the foods. And this is where it can be a lot of fun. On that very last page, I actually have a spring bottled water that was about 60 euros, which blew my mind because, again, I am coming from Hawaii for 16 years. I'm in Europe and I'm going, so it's basically going to be like almost like $90. And I went, what? And so as a psalm, I mean, I've seen bottles of wine that can be collectibles, and they can be quite expensive. And it would far surpass this, but I did not know that bottled water can go in this direction. Um, it does not mean that we want everything to be that way. It's just that these are going to be niches, just like if you have places in uh, Napa or in Grand Cru. Uh, it's just very special. So those are luxury items and specialty, not the necessity. The Water Psalm program, what I found was really special, is that it's also working as a water advocate. And so we're not only learning about this fun little nuance and amenity and something very um, lovely and nuanced with uh, flavor profiles and working on our palate, but we're also learning about the areas that it came from. Um, our guest, Tracy, who's going to be with Fiji, we're also going to talk a little bit about their sustainability and their practices and what they've brought um, in the middle of the Pacific as well. Um, and in regards to what we have here and how different water is all over. When you're tasting the waters, has everyone actually been able to go through all six? Great, great. So. When you're looking at some of the trace minerals, one of the most basic ones to start off with would be sodium. And I believe all of you are pretty much in tune to that. That's going to be salt. So when you're tasting the water, maybe if you get another chance to do another little sip through, let's see if you can actually taste salt in each one. And then maybe start feeling, is it, are they, is one stronger than the other? And that's just something to keep in mind because we can have, uh, there are bottled mineral water that have TDS of 10,000. 14,000, um, and then some of the waters that we're drinking are only about 180, which, again, none of this is a bad thing and none of this is a, an issue. It's just a matter of it's exciting to see the differences. And so that will be just fun for you to be able to taste through. 
Calcium can have a dryness and a little bitterness. So as you taste through the water, see if you can tap into any calcium. And that's going to be a dryness and a bitterness. And magnesium is actually going to have sort of a soft uh, sweetness. And a, it, if you think of milk and magnesium, you're actually going to have a soft sweetness to it. So those are going to just be three um, specific ones. And it goes on longer than that. There's a lot more. Um, you have body profiles. So when you're tasting your water, just like wine, you can actually have something that's light-bodied, full-bodied. Um, it can have a mid-palate. And so um, if we talk about body, a fun way to think about it would be like milk, uh, fat-free milk to whole milk. And so you know the feeling of 2% milk on your palate. That's going to be the way to tell different body styles. Um, for those of us that get into full-on deduction, we're going to be looking at the, if there's effervescence, freshness, clarity, um, acidity, structure, its lightness, its softness, its balance, um, the length. Uh, now we also look at certain things, are, are there any impurities? Um, those are going to be other things that we do as well if we're in a SOM setting, in a fine dining establishment. In Europe, there's a lot more of these um, than we have out here. Um, in the nation right now, through the Domains program, there's about a dozen of us. And there's, um, I'm actually one of five women in the nation. I'm the only one in Hawaii. And as far as the certification with water and wine, my friend Jessica, who's in Chicago, shares that with me as well. And so it's just kind of a fun thing. But the other thing about this is that this is an all-inclusive opportunity. Um, food is love and water is life. And every li living organism on Earth needs water. So for me, this is probably the most exciting subject I can talk about next to food and wine and all of that goodness because that's my other favorite thing to do. But this, for me, is something I just think is fascinating. Um, as we talk more about Fiji, we'll be able to go into um, a lot more about their process and what they did, and that will be very interesting because we have other companies here that are also emulating some of those um, habits and a company structures, which is very exciting, too, because we're going to see more sustainability. So at the end of the day, a water psalm, hopefully, is not just someone who is tending to luxury and pretentious. They should be a water advocate and someone who's here to help uh, preserve and prevent other issues um, nationwide, wherever we go, and globally. And um, so far, most of us and everyone I've met has been on the same page, so I think it's very exciting. So I like sharing about all of these resources because the more of you that know, the more you can go out and do great things, or maybe you have a great idea uh, for upcycling and recycling or sustainability or how we can protect our, our water supplies. Um, so anyway, that's just part of it. So regarding the waters, how, how, how do you like this so far, as far as the tasting, the subtleties between everything that you have? It's kind of fun. Um, so in regards to the waters, on the last page of the handout, I actually have what they all are. And I think what will be kind of fun for you is that you'll be able to see the differences between the tap water that was here, which again, we have great water here in Hawaii, but so we have the tap water. Then we have our aquapana, which is from Italy, and that's still. Then we have Fiji water, and that's also still. What's fun about the Fiji is this is the one that has the most silica. And so hopefully when you took that sip, there should be a real roundness. Um, so it kind of has a mid palate. Um, and it's just soft and round and voluptuous. And so that, again, is the Fiji water. It has the most silica in the world. Um, then we look at Hawaii, and that's going to be Hawaii spring water and for Hawaii volcanic. And they also have silica, but it goes from like 93 to 89 to 72, about that. And so at least you can see different levels. Um, as we go into Europe, at the very bottom, um, number three was Badois, which is going to be um, a really beautiful French carbonated. Then we have the Jarl Steiner, which is a German, and then we have the San Pellegrino, which is Italian. And you can see how drastically different the TDS is. Um, this is where you start having a lot more fun, too, with playing and pairing. For those of us um, that enjoy water on a regular basis, I think a lot of us actually forget to consume the amount of water that we should have, and we may not be as hydrated as we should be. So I think it's kind of fun that we all get to share a little water break together. Here's the other thing. Now we can start playing with it. So from a front of the house perspective, we can 
pair these different waters, but we can also cook with the different waters. We can do, instead of um, dry aged, we can do wet aged. I mean, these are things to play with, but at least it might give you some inspiration. You could infuse some of the waters with, say, rosemary or herbs, and you can do different things with it. Maybe it's a pan fry, something very interesting. Um, that's a lot of things with, when you add in waters that can bring them to life. But if you're going to, say, cook some rice, Maybe there's a water source that you might want to seek out and cook with. Um, maybe there's going to be a type of tea or a type of sauce that you want to make with something like that or coffee. All of these things can change dramatically with the water that we use. Um, something that I was really fascinated by and I didn't know until I was in Germany was that across the nation and pretty much all over, we don't test our municipal water for pharmaceuticals. Now, at the end of the day, I think we're all going to be fine right now, but I just wanted to let you know it's something interesting. Um, and so those are things for us to think about as we continue on in our profession, about how we do want to protect our waters for the oceans, what we're fishing for. Uh, in Seattle, off Seattle, there were oyst uh, oysters? Mussels, excuse me. There were mussels that had opioids in them. And so again, this goes back into water filtrations, what we have to think about. Um, I'm still very optimistic. I just kind of want to share that with you, so I don't want to get anyone worried. But this is really good for all of us to talk about and know and, and figure out how can we help make things better. For those of us in the front of the house, say if we are dining, and uh, say I'm sitting down, I'm having steak or um, barbecue or whatnot, but I'm not going to be someone who's going to be drinking, I could have, let's say, the Gerald Steiner, um, and that's going to be something that's going to hold up really well with hearty dishes. And for those that may have, for for those of us that are drinking or of drinking age, uh, it's a great substitution for beer because you have the carbonation like that. Um, in regards to carbonations, you actually have different levels of carbonation. So with the waters that you have, the Badois, um, the San Pellegrino, and the Geraldsteiner, those are going to be different levels of carbonation as well. The Badois should have more of a moosiness to it. Um, and then in regards to the Geraldsteiner, that has more of a little bit of a, a bigger bubble, a pop. And so in Germany, they have from silent to loud, and that's just a fun way to remember it, but they have their own verbiage for it. And how many of you were surprised by the amount of, uh, excuse me, the amount of magnesium and calcium and bicarbonates in each of these? Because they are very, very different. And hopefully through this, part of this is not so much to find something like, oh, I like this and I don't like these, because when you taste it with other things, it can be very different. Um, the Fiji water uh, that we have here, I think this would be a great time if I can also introduce you, Tracy. Um, those of us that are in the food and wine industry, when we're actually in a restaurant setting, we get to meet with people like Tracy who are representing these wonderful waters, and that's where we end up discussing what is special about what's in this bottle. Um, I thought this might be a good opportunity to tell you, uh, to ask you to tell them a little bit about what we have here, and this is gonna be a parting gift for you when you leave as well. Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me today. I just wanted to thank Joss, first of all, for letting me let me speak with all of you here today. Fiji Water has been a brand that started the sustainability movement for all beverages. So in 1996, David Gilmore, who was a guitarist for Pink Floyd, I don't think any of you guys know who he was, but it's gotta be. Pink Floyd. Homework assignment. <laughs> so he actually, he founded, or he found this hole. What happened was in the island of Fiji, he was bringing in all of this water for all of these movie stars. And he shipped these waters in by, via plane. And he thought there has to be a water source here, which he found. Once he found that water, he went to the government and he said, I can pay you to draw water out of this well. And once he did that, the government said, okay, what do we get in exchange? What he got in exchange was a buildup of the Fijian uh, economy, which really, really helped them. In 2004, the Resnicks purchased the company, thus started the sustainability movement within the beverage industry. We are very, very proud to be part of that movement to a fact where 40,000 acres of the Sovi Basin is protected by Fiji water for the next 200 years. Yeah. It's something that we hold very, very dear and near to our hearts because it's very important to have these rainforests out in the world. 
We have to protect them. This is our life. Water, like Josh said, is life. One of the other things that I wanted to let you know, I find it very, very interesting listening to Josh because honestly, in the world of water, guys, when I first started, water was water, which is absolutely how I felt. This is not the case. Yep. There are a lot of chefs out there, national chefs, local chefs, chefs like Sam Choi, Roy Yamaguchi, Alan Wong, that all support our, our product because of the softness, because of the pairing that is able to enhance the foods that they cook, that will in turn get the customers very excited about this partnering and partnerships. We purchased a winery in 2010, Justin Winery in Paso Robles. We, a year later, we purchased Landmark. But everything goes hand in hand, wine, water, food, in the restaurant industry. And I think that everyone, if you have that understanding of the water, the wine, and the food pairings, you will always be successful. It is something that we love to share yeah. because who doesn't drink water? Everybody drinks water. We have a lot of followings because of our brand. We are probably the number one recognized brand in the world. Yep. We always give kudos to the founders of this bottled water category, which is Evian. Evian started the category. Yep. Because of the minerality in the water of Evian, it wasn't as easy to drink as the softness that we get with Fiji water. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks. Wonderful. There really is a ton of different directions I can go in. Um, what I'd love to do is take a moment and find out if there's any questions that you have so far. And I also have more that I can share. This is something I can talk about for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. Any questions specifically so far? And, and don't worry, no pressure. We can always talk again. Um, you can reach out. I just. I'm not going to call on any of you specifically. So when she was talking about with the wine, um, in regards to those of us, again, in the restaurant setting or hotel setting, those of us that are uh, featuring different bottle, uh, bottles of wine, that's another important thing where water sources come in. You're going to see a lot more um, in this profession uh, with different uh, reading materials and subjects that will come up about what, how was the, what was the water that was being used to be able to tend to the grapes before it was crushed? What are we using um, for uh, farming? Uh, there's all these very, very important things. But then the other fun part of it um, is when we do have different tawa that is safe to use, how exciting that imparts on the food and how different that can be in the growing process or in the sauces that you make and whatnot. So I hope that serves as some inspiration that there's a whole variety. Realize that there are there's more than probably 4,000 different bottles of water across the world, and spring water in particular. Um, I'm not going into the other levels of, say, uh, purified water. So if we're looking at Dasani or Kirkland, so that would be Coca-Cola and Costco. Those are going to be municipal water that's been purified, so it's stripped, but then they add in um, those little trace minerals that you're tasting for flavor profile. They've done a lot of research to come across with a mass appeal product. That's another level. So that's something else totally different. These are going to be sourced and protected. Fiji water in particular, here I am in Germany in November, learning from a man named Neil uh, Fujiwara, who actually worked for Hawaii Springs, Hawaiian Springs water first. And then he went out to Fiji, and he helped with that preservation. He was there for three years. So someone from Big Island actually lived out there and helped with that whole preservation of Fiji water. And they have one of the most pristine facilities where you have codes and then thumbprints and like all these different things. And that adds, also serves as an inspiration to other people. I was able to go to two specific water companies that was um, Adelholzener and Precious Quelle, and one was the oldest water company in Germany, and that was amazing to be able to taste their profile. But then the Adelholzener had a number of SKUs, which are going to be um, the still waters to the sparkling water to the active waters to the flavored water, so it gives you an idea of a variety of products that they have. And it was really interesting to see the differences. Um, with that said, we also, in our program, which I think I'm going to pass this around, and you can actually take a peek at it and pass it over. These are four pages together. This was literally the program that I went through. And I'll pass this over to you, too. I'm sorry. And that way you can just pass it down the line. It's something that we have online as well, but it gives you an idea of how the different areas that we covered 
regarding not just water, the flavor profile, not just where they're sourced, but we had to learn what it takes to how to find and develop a source and what these companies go through. When you're dealing with wine, you're dealing with the seven to 10 year process. When you're dealing with tequila, that's the same thing, a seven to 10 year process. With water, it's also the same thing. So the few companies that we have locally, they've also gone through this process. So again, there's certain flavor profiles that are gonna be very similar to Fiji. And then if we were going into European um, waters, you're gonna get a lot more of these mineral complexities like the calcium magnesiums. Um, I think it's fun, you know, for those of us uh, in the, the back of the house that are creating food to provide for other people, it's fun to know that if you have someone who is lactose intolerant, you can get um, different magnesium, in, like what you need in magnesium intake from having water, which you don't have to have any of the other. Um, that's kind of a fun fact in regards to um, playing with uh, sugar levels instead of having soda, especially if we're doing a catering. If we're not gonna, um, I've been running with this because I think it's really fun, doing the local juices here like Lily Koi, um, the, it could be simple pineapple, whatnot, but fresh squeezed juice, even grapefruit, and just doing maybe a third of that being the juice and then cutting it with the sparkling water. And again, you figure out your own flavor profile. I think it's really fun using the European ones uh, just because I like the fact that that little extra sodium, that th it's just like if you put a little sprinkle of salt on something, just imagine that with the sodium that you're using there. So you're using it sparingly, you're cutting down your sugar, you're definitely not getting high fructose corn syrup. So I think that would be something fun for you to think about for any of the caterings or events that you're doing um, as an alternative, because we actually could really use that here. And if you use like Govindas or whatnot, then you're supporting local too. Um, but again, that's anywhere. Uh, a lot of people in Europe, what they do is apple juice. Um, so if you're going to be in uh, going for a run, um, that's a good way to uh, enjoy afterwards. And so it's really delicious. I also like doing it with orange juice too and pomegranate. It's kind of fun um, and good for the heart. There's a lot of different benefits that we get um, with water. Um, one of the other trace minerals I forgot to talk about was the bicarbonates. When you have water that's high in bi uh, bicarbonates, it's almost like a natural Alka-Seltzer. So for those of us that are dining and we're having champagne, sparkling, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, a dry, crisp uh, rosé, those are going to be higher in acid. And for those of us, as we get older, it's nice if we have a water that's higher in high um, bicarbonates because that's going to soften it. And um, the other thing is for those that maybe we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves, having a little bit of water at the end of the night that's higher with the sodium, just maybe 200 mLs, that is going to help you feel better the next day. <laughs> so these are just wonderful little things about the magic of water <laughs> that I really like. And those are just fun little tips for you as you continue on with college. Um, so, there's a lot of material still to talk about. For those of us as a psalm, we get a little bit geeky regarding glassware and whatnot. So I, I do think it's fun to rock a wine glass um, or certain flutes. Um, but again, um, no judgment, however you want to enjoy it. But I think the more of us that are consuming water in general, even if it's municipal, is a good thing. Uh, that's going to be one of my own little things is learning more about what's going on with our water here. I had asked for the report and it's a little bit vague, so feel free if you know more or if you can find out more, reach out to me too, because that's going to be a mission. Um, in regards to the waters that you have, I'm curious to know what spoke to you. So does anyone want to just, if anyone wants to, touch upon maybe the surprise or what was a, a little moment that was like, ooh, this is yummy or this was surprising or I didn't realize this had, does anyone have anything so far? Fantastic. Love it. It's true. And that's the other thing. Like, as you start tasting, you're going to start knowing. And that's part of the fun, too. It's really fun. And I love hearing that. And um, so the other thing, too, is that there's sparkling water that is natural. Um, and then there's sparkling that has had a little bit of light carbonation. And so you mentioned with the Australian, um, this Badois is going to be one of those that is a natural, which is a really fun thing. A lot of other companies are go looking into the other sparkling, which is exciting too, because it's nice to have a little bubble. But again, um, a natural sparkling is really fun to be able to see up against some others. And then you have um, 
Prosecco or Champagne, you can have something that's very moussey um, and very soft. And I would say the Boudoir has a little bit of that softness, like you were saying with the Australian spring water. And then when we have something like the Gerald Steiner, that is going to be a carbonation that's been added to it. Still lovely, but it's a little bit more sharp, a little bit more edgy. And so now you can start seeing those subtleties. Again, um, it, they're soft. It, it's not something that you have to know, but it's really fun when you do. So for me, I get geeky over it. I love that. That's so great. And that's totally different than the waters that we have in general. So I love, I love hearing about that one. I actually want to taste that. <laughs> So great. Um, so in regards to the overview, um, the water and wine. So for those of us as Psalms, when we really get into this, and those are if we're going for certifications, and we actually, just so you know, we have another master Psalm that just passed. Um, his name is Chris, and it's very exciting because it's very hard, and I think there's about 300 in the world. Uh, so it was, it's a really uh, challenge to get that. People like him um, understand all the different nuances, and those of us that actually go into fine dining restaurants that have an opportunity um, to either be treated to an experience or are treating others to an experience, uh, wine can be on a list as moderately as $65 a bottle all the way up to 14000 depending on what you have to spend in certain places. So if you can imagine being in a fine dining setting where maybe it's only going to go up to 2000 a bottle, we'll, we'll use Wolfgang's here in Waikiki as an example because they have a lot of collectibles on their list. That's going to be one of those places where if you're able to sit down and have a water um, that you know that's going to pair well with the investment in the edible experience that you just paid into, that's a really nice, that's a nicety that I think is really lovely to be able to do. And I've been able to play because of where I was. We actually experimented with a variety of different wines and waters and got to taste those nuances and subtleties. And it really does, uh, it's pretty mind-blowing. And again, we're, we're tasting and enjoying, and it's not just something we're scarfing down, but it was really lovely. Um, and again, all the different benefits from enjoying water just on a daily basis and all the benefits, health reasons, um, into the luxury side of it, which is really fun. And so I've just been very, uh, I'm very excited to be able to talk more about this. But there's, again, so much more. Yeah. Um, yes? So a master sommelier for wine, yes. Yes, the question was to, oh, I'm sorry, do you want to repeat the question? I will. The question was to be a master psalm, uh, do you have to blindly taste and then be able to get it right? And so for a master sommelier for wine, absolutely. It's actually in three different parts. And so that's a whole other thing. And yes, you do have to. And they actually would like you to get it down to <laughs> uh, the vintage and the producer. It, it, you go deep. And so for the wine side of it, understand that you have history in a glass. And there are subtleties and little clues to bring you to where it is. And it's amazing to see what people can do with their palate, their nose, their sensations, and what they see visually that reminds them of what they've tasted to get to where they need to go. Water has that as well in a different way, um, but it is there. So you'll have those different layers. We did actually blind. So, when we, so I'm not a master in water. Just so you know, I want to make sure we're clear on that. I'm certified in water, and that was a, a, a very intensive program. A master of wine is, sometimes takes people decades, if not their whole life, <laughs> if they even get that. And so it's actually a whole other process itself. And you have to just show up being prepared, and you're investing all your time and energy into it, and you're eat, sleeping, and breathing, and drinking it. Um, but it's very exciting. I'm just certified, which still, I'm really excited that I have that, and I've put in that time, and I love it. But there's an advanced level for the MS, and then there is this um, actual master psalm. So that's another thing, too. But the water side of it, when we did the actually getting certified, we did actually have to blind taste. So the vials that you saw on that page, those, that's something I actually had to blind taste through, and then we write in what they are. And we had a lot of other uh, deductions. So we have um, our tasting mats. And then 
we went into uh, probably about 10 different waters in particular. But then in the certification, we also took it from a retail side, we took it from a restaurant side, and then we actually created, each one of us, create our own little menus. So again, I was in Germany from Hawaii, so you have to understand, like, I did the best I could with mine, but it gave you a little descriptive of each if you were looking at an actual menu. And then we had descriptives as well. So it was a whole variety for how we can use um, that certification, which is pretty neat. And then I'm also applying it to what I do for, for my position now as well. So for um, the position I have, I'll be doing different events and dinners around the island for different on-premise. And then I'll be able to utilize uh, the Fiji with Tracy, uh, the Badois, as well as some others and do different tastings and whatnot, as well as um, Hawaii Volcanic and Hawaiian Springs. So it's pretty fun. That's, that's a great question. Any other questions so far? Because I know that there's a lot that I just kind of covered. Well, I really appreciate this opportunity. Um, I definitely can talk about more, but I just wanted to um, see what was on the line since he had mentioned. OK. So I definitely am hoping um, uh, in the next year, as I get situated, to be able to have a program like what I experience out here, not an exact certification the same way they have it. Theirs is amazing, because it's, again, in Germany, and you're going to the different uh, locations, and you have sources from all over. We have a little bit more limited source here in Hawaii from the variety they were able to get brought in just for their tastings. But the fact that they may come out here would be amazing. Four. Water collude the table. Sorry, I was looking for another fun little key point. I thought, you know, from the actual perspective of the culinary side, I was really excited to see what could happen, and that's why I wanted to plant the seed with the whole idea of how you could cook with it. So hopefully that might be something, if you do take from here something that you want to play around with, um, there's plenty of different bottled waters at the, the stores that you can play with, and if something happens and you're excited and something delicious, please share it with me. Um, I'd love to know about your own taste adventure and what you went on, but the, the wet aging I thought was really interesting and um, having water with the different herbs I thought was really great. And then um, out of the waters themselves, was anyone surprised that something was sparkling um, when they had picked it up because they thought it was going to be more still? Because I know they kind of had a chance to settle. There are some waters out there that can be completely still in the glass. Um, so for pouring in a wine glass at a dinner, it looks totally still, and you take a sip. And this, I think, would be like the Australian water, right? It looks totally great. So it looks totally still, and then you take a sip, and you're like, what? You know, it's just dancing, which is really exciting. And um, that's something that you'll find as well, and look forward to that, too, because that's a really, it's a neat ex experience. Um, I like that we had the aquapana uh, because I thought it showed a drier side because it had the calcium, um, which it showed the mid palette of the Fiji water. The, having that mid palette, I think, is really special. And the silica is one of the other special items that are in there. So that was, the, for me, what I was excited to share with you. Um, what do we think so far about this tasting? Do you like this? And hopefully, just keep in mind, you can enjoy every single one of those. Like, you don't have to hold back and leave anything left over. In, in wine tastings, you have to spit. If we're doing tastings, that's actually what you would do, just so you know. Um, I think, actually, this would be a good thing for you to know. When you are invited to a wine tasting or have the opportunity to, we normally actually have spit buckets or we have a side cup, and we are not consuming the wine as we're tasting. This, you can down. So you can just enjoy and get tipsy on the water, which you actually can do, by the way, if you have enough. Um, it's a, just a really fun little feeling. Um, you get, if you have enough water and you feel hydrated and you feel good, it's amazing, like, how you feel. So we kind of, I mean, we joke with the, it, there can be, yes. We're very fortunate, though, as people that we have, you know, everything working itself out. Um, but it's, it would take a lot to get there. <laughs> but I hope that everyone's going to consume what you have in front of you, because this is a great opportunity to be well hydrated today. And you'll be able to see its effects. So... If anything, I do feel like there's a lot to, more to cover, but I, I think this would be a good place to pause for a moment. Okay. If, you, if you have some more to share, we still have a little bit of time. Does anybody have any questions for Jocelyn? Yes. Uh, I'm going to ask this, but if we wanted to acquire anything like the Badois, what, what would we 
Absolutely. Um, so there's going to be a number of places to go. Trace will also be able to tell you too. Off the top of my head, I would say a couple of the main locations, Fujioka's, Tamora's, Arfield Wine Company, uh, J&J's um, in, in the nearby areas, different retail shops that you can special order if you don't see it on the shelf. Any of these, you can actually speak to any of your retailers and ask them if they'd bring it in for you. So if you have a small shop that's nearby and you want to support them and you know you're going to be picking up all of what you're ordering because they may not have it on the shelf, you can ask them to, to order it for you and bring it in. Otherwise, you can find it at those other locations. And um, some of these are also at... Safeway and Whole Foods, and so a lot of different places right now. Um, Badois is going to be a little bit more limited, but doesn't mean you can't get it. Yeah? And is it expensive to get your certification? The, the certification was, yeah. So um, that would have been about $2,700 and to, you know, for the program, but it is all inclusive. Hmm? Uh, for the certification, which was two full weeks in Germany. And it was um, actually the visits to the, the different um, w uh, bottling plants. Um, there were definitely field trips. There were dinners that we did. There was over 100 bottles that we tasted. I mean, it was um, really amazing. Um, and then uh, in addition to staying in um, Grafelfing, it was really great. How long did it take you to get your certification for wine? Well, certification for wine, I mean, I would have been playing with that for like a year, a year and a half. And that was with studying. And then I also was very fortunate to come across people like Chuck Furrier, who's a master psalm. So just having those people who are inspiring. And um, that would have been off and on. But yeah, I would have said about a year and a half studying. And then I took that. And then again, I, I want to go for the advance at some point or it will be the MW. And that's going to be really buckling down. And so for your first level, what did, you took a test then? Or you might explain what you... Yes. Learned. Well, when I had taken it, I actually had to go to Las Vegas. So I had to go to the Bellagio in Las Vegas to get certified. Now, because of people like Chuck Furia and Patrick Okubo and all these other great people um, who have helped each other um, to be able to bring it here to do certification. So that's something I can get information on and I can send over that can be emailed out. Um, or if you're interested, you can email me and I can tell you when the next certification is here in Hawaii. So those are master sommeliers that are located right here in Hawaii. So we have a great network now. Oh my goodness, yeah. We're so really lucky per Jim, square foot. Are there any other questions? Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Oh, and thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you very much.